for chapter 16, we're going to be working with transaction processing. And I've already gone ahead and keyed in uh, the first task and exercise. And our scenario is our boss would like us to use transaction processing to update invoice and invoice line items. Now the data that we need to update is in the AP database. And the two tables are invoices and invoice line items. We'll take a look at the columns. And you'll notice that the two tables are related based on invoice ID. Invoice ID is a foreign key in invoice line items, and it's also a primary key. It is the primary key in invoices. So if we're going to add a new invoice and a couple of items for that invoice, we have to insert the invoice first. And then we have to grab the primary key, which is our identity column. And we have to use that value in invoice line items. Okay, so we have to add the invoices first, then we have to add the line items using that value, that primary key value from invoices. So that's basically what we've set up here. And you'll notice that we have this in a try block. Inside the try block, we have begin tran. And assuming everything goes well, we're going to commit the transaction. Now, if there's a problem with any of these steps, and it, it will be the insert steps that have the problem, there is any kind of an error, what will happen is it's going to go down to the catch block, and the catch block rolls back the transaction, which means it's going to back out of any changes that were made. So if the error happens down here and the invoice uh, row was inserted and one of the line items were inserted, we're going to be backing out of those changes. Okay? Because either they all work and get committed or nothing gets committed. So that's kind of how this is set up. And then you'll notice, just so we can see our changes, we're running a little select here at the end. So we're going to go ahead and execute this. And so we can see for the vendor 34, we should have a couple new line items that are displayed. And let's see, we've got this last item is the one that was inserted. So if we wanted to see those line items, let's comment this out. We'd have to do a little select from invoice line items. where the invoice ID is equal to 132, because that's the one that was inserted right here. And then we'd be able to verify that those line items got in there. Okay, so you can see the two line items that we added are in there under invoice 132. Now for our next scenario, um, our boss wants a short transaction processing script to delete one invoice for a specific vendor. However, if more than one invoice is deleted, then there's a problem and they want us to back out of the changes. So, 
Here we've got uh, a begin transaction. We've got delete invoices where the vendor is equal to 34, which is uh, the one that they actually want us to remove. Uh, then if we check the row count, if it's more than one, that means there's a problem because too many invoices were deleted. So we roll back the transaction, we print out a little message that there's a problem. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and commit the transaction and print a message that the deletion was committed to the database. So we're gonna go ahead and execute. And there was a problem. <laughs> Uh, it would have deleted three rows instead of one, so we rolled back the deletion. And let's move our closing comment down. And at this point, let's save this. And we are going to call it Chapter 16, Textbook Assignment. And I'm going to change the location here. And for our next scenario, our boss would like us to create a transaction that makes a temporary table and deletes multiple vendors from the table. And then our boss would like us to save transaction points. So some of the updates can be successful if there are errors. So I'm gonna pause this and get the code all in here and then we're going to go through what the code is doing. So I've kind of added comments in here so you can see um, how rolling back is gonna affect the results. Uh, but what we've done up top here is um, we're creating a temporary table. And so what I do first is check to see if the temporary table is there. If it's there, I delete it. That way we don't get any errors. And then I go ahead and do a select into and create the temporary table. And we're only going to include vendors one, two, three, and four. Okay, so those are the vendor IDs that are less than five. So you'll notice we have a begin tran. And so then we're going to delete from vendor copy where the vendor ID is one. And here's a save point. Okay, save transaction and we're naming it vendor one. So that is the save point. Uh, then we're deleting vendor copy where vendor ID equals two. And now we have another save point, and you'll notice that the names are different. Then we do another delete where a vendor ID is a three, and we don't have a save point here. Okay, we do a select, and all that's left in the table at this point is one vendor, because we've deleted one, two, and three. Okay, then if we have a rollback, Okay, rollback tran vendor two, then we're going to see two vendors because now we have backed out of a transaction, but it didn't back all the way out. Okay, it only backed up to the transaction point. Uh, then if we roll back to tran, uh, to tran vendor one and we do a select, it's going to show three vendors. Okay, and then uh, if we do a commit, our table is going to have three vendors and one is going to be deleted. So let's go ahead and execute this. Nope, I'll try that again. There you go. Does not like it when things are highlighted. All right, so the very first select is this one. And at that point, we have one vendor, which is exactly what we anticipated. Then we roll back to this point. So it's backing out of the deletion of number three. 
and we do a select. So now it's showing three and four, which is exactly what we expected. Then it rolls back to this save point, which is vendor one. So now it is backed out of two and three. And so what we're seeing uh, is vendor two, three, and four. And at this point, when it does the commit, the first one is the one that is deleted. Okay, so when we do our final select, vendor one is gone, the rest are still there because we rolled back to specific save points. And we're going to move this down. And our next scenario is our boss would like us to create a new foreign customer table from the customer table in Northwind. And then they would like us to use transaction, transaction processing and delete several customer IDs. Uh, the IDs they want to delete are Ranch, Frank, Islot, and Wilm K. So our first command that we are going to create is the one that's going to generate the foreign customer table. So we're going to have to say use Northwind. And then we're going to select into foreign customers from customers where the country does not equal USA. Okay, so that'll give us all the foreign customers. 78 rows. And if you want to actually see what's in there, we can run a little select. We move the closing comment down. Okay. And if we look in the country column, you'll notice that they are all countries that are not USA, which is exactly what we told it to do. Uh, then what we're going to do is create a transaction processing script with save points to delete the customers and display messages when they are deleted. Or if there is a problem, it's going to display a little different message. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and get the code in and then we'll talk about what it does. So what I did with this is I kind of grouped deletions and we're just doing two deletions at a time. And so I kind of grouped them into what's called a batch. I could have done them individually, uh, any kind of configuration you want, but I figured two and two uh, would allow me to create some save points. And then if there's a problem, at least two of them would be committed and I just have to resolve the problem on the other two. So I'm using Northwind. And you'll notice that I've got the try and catch. So I've got begin try and try, begin catch and catch. And inside the try and catch, that's where I've got begin tran. And I have the two delete statements. And then I save the transaction uh, point here, save tran, I'm calling it vendor batch one. And as long as all of that work, it gets committed and it prints out a little message that uh, the batch one deletions were committed. Okay. If there's an issue with either deletion, then it's going to roll back and basically back out of both deletions and print out that there was a problem, an error in batch one. After it completes batch one, it's going to go down and process batch two. And again, we've got the try catch. And within the try, that's where we're beginning our transaction. We've got two delete statements. We're saving a transaction point and we're committing the transaction. So if everything goes well with the deletions, we create the transaction point, we commit it, and we print out the message that two deletions, uh, batch two deletions were committed. Uh, if there's a problem with either delete, then it's going to go down to the catch. It's going to roll completely back out of vendor batch two, which means it's not going to commit either of those. And then it's going to print 
a error message. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And I got to resize my pane here. And you can see batch one deletions were committed, and so we're batch two. No problems in the deletions. But you can see how this would actually come in handy if you had several different transactions. Okay? Because if you split them up into batches like this, then at least you are completing some of them if there is a problem. Okay? You're not backing out of everything. So I'm going to move this down. And we're moving on here to our next scenario. So our boss would like London customers deleted from foreign customers. Uh, the boss expects there to be one customer from London. Uh, if there is more than one customer, then we're going to roll back the deletions. So this is similar to one that we've already done. So we're going to put in our code. And we've still got the try catch business here. And then we've got begin tran, delete foreign customers where city equals London. If the row count is greater than one, there's an issue. We are only expecting one customer. If there's more than one, we need to roll back print out a little message, hey, there's more than one customer, deletions were rolled back. Otherwise, we're going to commit the transaction, put a little message out that the deletion was committed. And if there's any kind of unexpected error, okay, if it's not a row count issue, any other error, it's going to run through the catch and it's going to roll back the transaction and indicate that there is an error. And it has nothing to do with row count, it's something else. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this. Now let's try this again. Okay, so now I'm getting more than one customer was deleted and deletions were rolled back. So then if I want to see, well, how many London customers do I even have? I'm going to move my closing comment down. And I'm going to run this little select. Yeah, there's quite a few more than one. <laughs> so um, I would actually at this point go to the boss and say, uh, yeah, there's six London customers. Um, do you want to delete by customer ID? Okay. Um, so this is pretty much uh, the end of what you have to do for transaction processing. Hopefully you understand what it is now. And you're going to want to save your changes. And you're going to upload this file to the Dropbox.